Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video I'm going to talk about something related to circuits, but it's something we kind of maybe use in uh, writing particular circuit analysis problems uh, known as the unit step function. So this is something you may have seen in previous math classes, but again, we kind of use it sometimes in sort of examining different circuits because it allows us to think about what happens when certain sources, either voltage sources or current sources, are uh, turning on or turning off, you know, based on some uh, change in time, okay? So here I have just a generic circuit, um, and in this case I have two different sources, of course my vol voltage source and a current source here, and I'm saying that both of these sources are dependent on this unit step function, okay? And so that's going to change then what would happen with the various currents and voltages in, in a circuit. Here we have an RLC type circuit uh, that um, we could be applying this to, but again it could be universally applied. Um, so what we want to just keep in mind right off the bat is that the unit step function is a function that tells us that uh, it's going to have a value of either 1 or 0, okay? And it's going to have a value of 1 for any time t greater than or equal to 0, and it's going to have a value of 0 for any time t is less than 0, okay? So again, what does this tell us then in sort of thinking about how it applies to a, some different sources or whatnot? Well, it's saying like, take for instance, this voltage source here is saying, we're saying that the voltage of this voltage source is five times the unit stump function U of T. So if I think about for any time less than zero, this value is just going to be equal to zero, which then tells me that this voltage on this source has to be equal to zero. Um, alternatively, um, on what we see on the current source is actually kind of the inverse of the function to say uh, the current from this current source over here is going to be the value of 10 times u to the, uh, of the minus t. So due to the minus, if we wanted to just kind of write that out more explicitly, this would be uh, if I say u of minus t, well this would just give me the opposite uh, outcome where I'd have a zero for any t uh, let's say greater than or equal to zero, and it would be equal to one for any t less than zero. So then in thinking about this current source, this is saying that the current source at time less than zero is going to be one times 10, so let's say 10 amps from that current source. So for any time t less than zero, that current source is active. It's supplying current to the rest of the circuit, while this voltage source we said is turned off basically initially for any time t less than zero. But then once we reach t equals zero, whenever that event occurs, let's say, uh, well then this current source, again, now would go to zero because of the sort of the inverse of the function here, would go to zero for any time t greater than zero, therefore meaning no current coming from this current source over here, whereas my voltage source would then be five times one, so just five volts coming from this source. So let's, again, just to kind of illustrate that point, I'll erase this here and we'll just look at, you know, exactly what that means, what this circuit, how we could do the analysis on this circuit, both before time t equals zero and both, and uh, as well for time t after uh, zero, okay? Okay, so in the first example, let's think about uh, what this circuit exactly kind of, how we can represent this circuit more clearly for any time t less than zero, okay? So again, we said for t less than zero, if we have u of minus t as our unit step function, that means this current source is in fact active. So I will have this in the mix here. And so this again would just be a value of 10 amps. And then all my other elements remain the same here. Uh, my resistor R2, capacitor here, uh, inductor that I have, and the resistor R1 here. Okay, then it's a matter of looking at this voltage source where this is purely based on the unit step function. So for time t less than zero, we said that this voltage would be, or the unit step function would equate to zero, therefore meaning I have zero volts from this source. And so remember, when we're talking about a voltage source that has no voltage across it, that's the same thing as just having a short circuit, okay? So I can still have current flow, I can still have current flow through this source, but there's no voltage drop or voltage rise across the terminals of that source, which is by definition the same thing as simply saying uh, that I have a, um, a short circuit here, okay? So again, these are just all my same elements here and my 10 amp source here. So that, and then what we would do typically in an in a RLC or, or an RL or RC problem, we would be evaluating initial conditions. So this would give us 
the picture we want to examine for evaluating initial conditions. Maybe that means we want to know what the current would be through this inductor or what the voltage is across um, the capacitor, whatever the you know, specific case you may be examining. But this is how we could examine that problem um, by taking into account what the unit step functions tell us. Okay? So now let's look at the case where we have time t greater than or equal to zero and how that sort of changes the uh, problem in evaluating the conditions after time t equals zero. Okay, so for now, for, uh, as soon as we get to time t equals zero, what does that mean? So that is now telling us that our current source over here, because it's, uh, the function is u of minus t, that means that's going to be equal to zero after time t equals zero. So we know that if I have zero amps of current coming from the source, that's basically the same thing as just having an open circuit, right? This open circuit would imply we have no current flow. So again, this is where my current source would be sitting, but again, it's, we're, we're saying that after time t equals zero, this becomes deactivated, so we can more or less uh, drop that out of the picture as far as doing the analysis goes. So here's my R2 resistor, uh, my capacitor that I have, inductor, and then my other resistor, okay? And then again now evaluate, evaluating what's happen, happening with the voltage source, which is purely based on the function u of t. So now u of t equates to one for time t greater than or equal to zero. So this is now just a, a voltage source that is applying a five volt source to my circuit, okay? So that's how I could look at that. And so now again, this is the picture I could use for evaluating whatever um, maybe final conditions I need to evaluate for this RLC circuit or any other specific conditions that we need after this, after we hit uh, the time t equals zero uh, point in the problem, okay? So this just gives you, again, a quick idea of how we can use the unit step function in circuit analysis problems to kind of evaluate maybe certain sources turning on or turning off. The important thing is to just remember what it means exactly to turn on and off a current source versus turning on and off a voltage source. Um, and again, it's just a matter of thinking about what does that mean? If I turn off a voltage source, it means I'm dropping the voltage to zero. And if I have zero volts across an element, that means it's acting as a short circuit. Um, alternatively, if I talk about turning off a current source, that means I'm dropping the current to zero, which then by definition just means I have more or less an open circuit there because I can have no current flow through that branch of the circuit. There will still certainly be a voltage across that uh, current source, but again, no current flow specifically, okay? So that's just, a, again, a quick wrap up for how we might apply this in a certain different problems. And uh, that wraps up for this video. Hope to see you on the next one.